I heard you got your first data science job. Congrats. And I'm sure you don't want to look foolish, but it's easy to look like one when you haven't done any projects at work ever. Most companies will use Python to complete their projects. But the question is, which libraries should you use to finish your project? You have to be able to complete projects from start to finish, and you have to be efficient at it. That's where knowing which libraries to use and when can really help. So let's take a look at some Python libraries and map them to specific stages in a project. The first stage is data collection. You for sure won't be working with some generic data from Kaggle. You'll need to use data from the company's database or scrape data on your own. So if you want to connect to a database at your company, you can use several SQL connectors such as SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is an efficient way to handle database operations using Python. It will allow you to connect to the database and grab data into your Python notebook. Now, if you want to steal some data from other sources, you can use one of these three popular web scraping libraries. The first one is Scrapy. It's a web crawling framework for Python and it's ideal for large scale data extraction. It has a unique feature. It has the ability to handle asynchronous requests efficiently, making it faster for large scale scraping tasks. Beautiful Soup. This is used for parsing HTML and XML documents. It's simple and more user-friendly than Scrapey, making it ideal for beginners or for simpler scraping tasks. Its unique feature, it's flexible in terms of parsing poorly formatted HTML. Selenium, used primarily for automating web browsers. It's perfect for scraping data from websites that require interaction, like filling out a form or pressing a bunch of buttons. The next stage in the data science project is data exploration. Ideally, you have a huge amount of data to work with and you won't be going through it manually. So let's look at some libraries. The first one is NumPy. Everyone knows NumPy. It's the most important data science library for Python. Many other libraries are also built on top of NumPy. Its unique feature, the ability to perform efficient array computations. Also, everyone knows Pandas, the second library. It offers easy to use data structures like data frames. It also offers a lot of different tools to help you explore and manipulate data in the data frames. You need to know how to use it well, enough said. And lastly, SciPy. It's used for scientific and technical computing. SciPy is more focused on advanced computations, so it offers additional functionalities like optimization, integration, and interpolation. Its unique feature, an extensive collection of sub-modules for different scientific computing tasks. Stage three, data manipulation. Now you're at a crucial stage of your data project. There's no good data project without quality data. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. There are a few libraries that can help with data manipulation. The first one is Pandas, as we know. We already mentioned that it has data frames that you can use and explore data but it also has many built-in functions that can turn 100 lines of code into just two. Pandas is the de facto library to use as a data scientist. Everyone learns off of Pandas. But there's a new competitor, Polars. It's a relatively new library that's similar to Pandas, but much faster. Polars can work with all of the database flavors, cloud storage formats, text formats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera but its unique feature is that it's super, super fast. And lastly, commercial libraries like PySpark and Spark SQL are really good at handling a ton of data that companies typically have. There are many other libraries depending on your company's infrastructure. These libraries are BigQuery, Scala, PyTorch, et cetera, and et cetera. You won't really be using these libraries unless you're at work, so there's really no reason to learn them on personal projects or if you don't even have a job. Just wait till you get a job and learn them at that time. Stage four, data visualization. When you reach this stage, you're quite close to finishing your project. You need to now create a few charts, create a few graphs to tell the whole story about your data. The best Python libraries for data viz are number one, matplotlib. Here you can create a wide range of visualizations like static ones, interactive ones, or even animated ones. 
It's probably the most customizable data viz library available. You can control pretty much any element of the plot. Second is Seaborn. It's built on top of matplotlib because matplotlib is pretty ugly. But if you want something that looks nice, Seaborn is a great library. And one of its great features is that it's fully integrated with pandas data frames. Another library is Plotly. It's the most interactive library of the bunch. You can even use it to create dashboards, integrate your code with Plotly, and see your graphs on the Plotly website. And lastly, Streamlit. This library allows you to create custom web apps for data science and machine learning projects. It's easy to use and allows creating interactive dashboards with minimal coding. It integrates nicely with other Python libraries such as Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Stage five, model building. All of the hard work you did on processing your data is now done. And now you are ready to use that data to build a model. These three libraries will make it very easy to build your model. The first library, scikit-learn. It's the most famous Python library for ML. It offers simple yet efficient functions to build your model in just a couple of seconds. Of course, you can develop many of these functions by yourself, but only if you want to write 100 lines of the code instead of just using one line of code to pull in the functions. It's the most comprehensive collections of algorithms in a single package. Number two, TensorFlow. It's a library created by Google and is better suited for high-level models such as deep learning. It offers high-level function for building large-scale neural network compared to scikit-learn. And lastly, Keras. It offers a high-level neural network API and is capable of running on top of TensorFlow. It focuses more compared to TensorFlow on enabling fast experimentation with deep neural networks. Now you're on the last stage of your data science project. This stage is deploying models into production. You want to share your model with the world and let it savor your genius. And yes, you can do that, but only if your model becomes more than just a script. To draw anybody's attention to your work, you should turn your model into a web app or an API so others can see how good of a job you did. So here are a few libraries and frameworks to know. The first one and the most famous framework is Django. It will allow you to take your model, basically your script, and turn it into a web application or an API that you can deploy on the web. It has a lot of cool built-in features like an admin panel and is considered a little bit more complex than other libraries and frameworks out there. One of the more simpler frameworks is a micro framework called Flask. And I would say if you're trying to just develop an API, this is a great lightweight framework to learn. Lastly, we have FastAPI. It's speedy and it's easy to use. And so it's a very popular framework for deploying models into production. Its unique features include automatic generation of documentation and built-in validation using Python type hints. So yes, being a good data scientist means doing a project end to end. It's not an easy task, but it can be done with the help of a lot of Python libraries. So go on, try them at your work. If you like content like this, please subscribe to this channel and go on to stratascratch.com to get data science resources. Thank you.